with eyeshadow a lot at this point and there's certain things that really can help give that airbrush look so if you are interested in seeing how to achieve a super blended out eyeshadow then just continue on watching the first step to having blended out eyeshadow is to properly prime your lids so what I start off with is a eyeshadow primer this is the Smashbox 24 hour photo finish primer so this product doesn't have any coverage it won't cover any veins or discoloration but it does get tacky, so that means that the eyeshadow is going to have some adhesive to hold on to. And I find that it really does intensify my shadows. Then the next step is to go over top with a full coverage concealer. If you're someone who doesn't have discolored eyelids or veins on your eyelids or anything like that, then you could just stick with this, then that's totally fine. But I like to have a really clean, smooth, even base. So I like to go in with the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer and dab on top of that. Then I like to go in with any eyeshadow that matches my skin tone and then set everything so that it doesn't crease. So at this point, that's what I've done to my lids. So the next step is choosing your eyeshadow palette. I'm just going to go in with my ABH Modern Renaissance palette. For no particular reason, I chose this palette. It is one of my everyday palettes that I reach for. The shadows itself are really blendable. There is a little bit of kickback, but nothing too intense. So I'm just gonna use this palette because I feel like using this color scheme, but you could go and use whatever eyeshadow palette that you would like to use. Obviously choosing an eyeshadow palette that is more blendable is going to give you a more blended out look, but use what you have. So starting off with your initial color that you're gonna put on your lid, you want to start off with something that is going to be a transition color. So that's going to go just above the crease. And I like to put it a little bit in the crease. So this color is going to help blend out your future colors. I feel like that's a very known thing. I don't like to just put this color on once and then move on to the next color. I'm really going to build up this transition color so that it has its own gradient before I go in with the next shade. So I'm gonna go in with the second lightest shade in this palette and that is called Golden Ochre. That is gonna give me a nice base and I'm gonna build that up so that it is visible on my lid but it also has a gradient. And I'm gonna go in with my Morphe M441 brush. This brush is really nice because it is goat hair and it is a little bit dense, but it also is fluffy at the same time. So it deposits the color really nice and lightly and allows you to build up that color. So if you accidentally go in with too much, it's not gonna be like a huge blob of dense color right on your lid. It's just gonna help fluff that out. So as you can see, I have no foundation on. I personally don't like to do my base makeup until after my eyeshadow's done. I feel like sometimes it does get a little bit messy and it's hard to clean it up once you already have powder on your face. So I do have some little tips and tricks when I'm applying my foundation to make sure that everything looks really clean and blended out with your eyeshadow. So I start in the very outer corner and I pat the color on. And I start to make a curve around this part of my eye and bring it in to the crease. I'm not pressing very hard at all. Now I'm just gonna repeat this until I've built the color up. Now that I've built up golden ochre, I'm going to go in with a clean, dense blending brush. This is the NYX number 16 brush. So I like to go in with a clean, dense blending brush throughout each different step after I put down one color. So this will just make sure that any parts that got a little bit like uneven blend out nicely. So what you're going to see me doing is going in with very similar shades. Very similar shades? that are a little bit darker, a little bit warmer, and just building up each of those tones. I find that it gives a really multi-dimensional look to do that. Once I go in with the darker shade, I always dip into that lighter shade I used previously to blend out that darker shade. It gives that extra dimension, and then for some reason, it just looks more airbrushed when I dip into the previous lighter color that I'd used to blend out the new darker color. So first, I'm gonna go into the shade Raw Sienna. This one is similar to Burnt Orange, but it's just not as orange, it's more brown. And I'm going to follow the exact same shape that I had done with Golden Ochre. I'm just 
gonna dip back into Golden Ochre with that same Morphe M441 brush. With a really light hand, I'm just going to go in circular motions over the color that I just put down. The next color I'm going into is called Burnt Orange. So it's very similar to Raw Sienna, it just has more of a warm orange undertone. Now I'm gonna go in with my Morphe M330. So this brush is fluffy, but it tapers at the end. So I like to put this right in the crease and it kind of just blends it out on its own into the transition shade. Now that I'm done placing down Burnt Orange, I'm gonna dip back into Burnt Orange and I'm also gonna dip into Raw Sienna and make a mixture of the two. I'm gonna go over top of everything that I've done so far. So now what I'm gonna do is I want to put one of the pinky red shades on my lid and blend it up into my crease. So this is a little bit harder because you're going in with a slightly darker color than what you would actually usually put on your lid. Like you would usually put something that's brighter or something that's glittery. Something to have that brightness in your inner corner but I want to put something that's a little bit darker just to try something out and it shows how these steps actually will help to blend you out because you put a darker shade there, it's sometimes harder to blend out. I'm just going to go with an all over eyeshadow brush and dip into Venetian Red. And I'm going to pack this color all over the lid. So this looks horrible right now, but that's okay. That's what happens when you're like in between blending everything. So I'm going to go with my MAC 217 brush and go back into Raw Sienna and Burnt Orange. And then go throughout my crease to blend out that harsh line. So now I'm going to go in with my MAC 217 and dip into Red Ochre and put this throughout my crease. So one of the last steps in blending out your eyeshadow before you put on your face makeup is to take your face setting powder. So this is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Powder Foundation. So it's obviously relatively close to my skin tone. It's what I set my entire face with. I'm going to go in with that same NYX Dense Blending Brush and dip into it. Tap off the excess and then I'm just gonna go over top right where the transition shade is and around the corners and blend that out. So basically it's gonna mimic my own skin tone and basically melt that color into my skin. So I'm just gonna show you how I apply my foundation to prevent any screw ups on my nicely blended out eyeshadow. For foundation I'm going in with the Bourjois Paris Healthy Mix Serum. I just picked this up from the drugstore. I've seen Kathleen Lights rave about this foundation and I really really wanted to give it a try and I'd never seen it in my drugstore before so I thought I would pick it up. The color looks like it might be too dark so ignore that if that's kind of what happens with it. So, um, yeah, this is too dark for me, but uh, oh, it's kind of all over my leg. We're just gonna kind of roll with it. Oh no. Okay, we're ignoring the fact that this is too dark for me. Ugh, what a bummer. Um, and we're just gonna blend it out as per usual. But once you get to around your eyes, you're gonna kind of keep your distance and tap really lightly around that blended out portion. You wanna be really delicate so that if any foundation does get on it, it doesn't disrupt the blending that we've already done. So concealer can be really tricky because if you put it too close to that blended out outer portion of your eyeshadow, it can really screw it up and create a harsh line, which is not what I'm going for today. So I do need concealer because I have really bad dark circles right now and the foundation is too dark for me, so I need to lighten it. So aside from those two things, I'm gonna go in with my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer and I'm not going to bring this directly under my bottom lash line. I'm gonna dab it. So I'm gonna stop right there and then I'm going to take my Beauty Blender and the point of not bringing the concealer directly underneath my lash line is so that I can blend the product up towards that lash line and then I'll have less product on my Beauty Blender so it won't disrupt the eyeshadow. So I jumped off camera and I completed the rest of my face and I'm gonna zoom in to give you guys a closer look at the blended out look. I hope that you did find this video helpful. If you did like this, I would love if you could like, subscribe and comment down below.
video, I'm going to be doing a first impression slash review on the Milk Makeup Holographic 